This video is for educational purposes only and only competent persons should attempt the installations shown in this video. Hi, this is Bill for Sparky Channel and today I'd like to show you how to install a switched receptacle that is dedicated and marked for a controlled or switched receptacle. In an earlier video, I went over the NEC codes pertaining to marked controlled receptacles like this and I'll put a link for that video in my video description. But whether you must use one of these special receptacles or not by code, I feel that it's always a good idea to use one for clarity for the users of the switched receptacle. I'll start with the wiring and testing of the switch, which is essential to the installation of the marked controlled receptacle. This is a dual switch box. This particular switch controls a porch light and I'm going to be installing another switch next to it that will control the lower half of a receptacle. The top part will be hot all the time and the lower part will be hot when the new switch that I install here is turned on. I currently have the circuit breaker on. Notice that the wires are covered with wire connectors and the switch is wrapped with black electrician's tape and this is for safety. While I have the electricity on to make these tests, everything needs to be very, very safe and I'll have the electricity on just very temporarily while I make the test, then I will turn the electricity right back off. It's by Fluke 1AC voltage sensor and it's sensing voltage right now. Okay, so the red wire is hot. The red wire going to this port switch is hot. And this black wire, which will also be going to the switch, is not hot. So we have the red wire being hot and the black wire is not hot at this point. When it's hooked to a switch and the switch is turned on, the black wire will also be hot. Okay, before I turn the circuit breaker off, I'm gonna make one more test. I have the red lead hooked to the hot red wire here, and I put the black lead to the metal of the box. I have 116 volts AC. So what that tells me is that there's a ground coming behind this metal box. It's the old 1957 grounding method, and so this will be grounded as long as I use self-grounding clip. See, this is a self-grounding clip right here, and the other switch I'm going to put on will also have a self-grounding clip. And I'll make the same test on the receptacle box, and I'm getting 116 volts here as well, which shows that this has a ground wire coming to the back of it. Notice I've wrapped the white neutral wire in white electrician's tape. That's to help insulate the old wire and for color coding as well. I have the circuit breaker turned off now and everything is reading as not hot. So that's a double check. And so I'm going to go ahead and install this switch. This switch has a self grinding clip right here. So we'll be able to take advantage of the metal grounded box that we tested for. So I'm going to take the red wire and put it to one terminal. Tighten it down securely. These switches, by the way, say top right here. So you put the top on the top. Okay, and there's no ground wire. So I've just screwed in the green grounding terminal. Okay, and I tighten that securely. Push these wires in here. Now I'll wrap this switch in black electrical tape as well. Here's something you may encounter when working on old houses. Your switches are bigger than the cheap little switches that they had. There may be a little extra plaster and you need to carefully remove that plaster. Don't damage your walls or so forth but just carefully remove that little extra plaster so that you can get your new switches into the box. 
And then we move over to our half hot receptacle and I check out all the wires to make sure they're not hot. And as an additional test, I can put my lead in the wire that we know is hot and this one is the neutral and we have 0, 0.0 volts. And that's a double check so we know that this is not hot. I have this wire wrapped up with black electrician's tape and this one wrapped up with white electrician's tape because this is the neutral. On a marked controlled receptacle, the neutral side terminals are connected together by a brass tab. So you only need one neutral wire to serve both halves of the duplex receptacle. On the hot side of this marked controlled receptacle, there is no brass tab. So both halves of the duplex receptacle require their own source of electrical current. The hot terminal, which serves the top unswitched and uncontrolled portion of the duplex receptacle, will receive the red wire, which is hot all the time. The lower hot terminal, which is the controlled portion of the receptacle, will receive the black wire, which is only hot when it is switched on by the wall switch. First, I'll connect the white neutral wire to either of the silver colored neutral terminals, and I'll tighten it down securely. Next, I'll attach the black wire, which is the switched hot wire, to the brass colored terminal of the controlled portion of the duplex receptacle. I'll tighten it securely. Now I'll attach the red wire to the brass colored terminal of the uncontrolled portion. This will make this half of the receptacle hot all of the time. I'll tighten securely. After putting some black electrical tape around the terminals for safety, I'll install the marked controlled receptacle in the box. Now I've turned the circuit breaker back on and I have inserted my receptacle tester in the controlled portion of the duplex receptacle. The two green lights indicate correct wiring. When I turn the wall switch off and on, it demonstrates that this portion is controlled by the switch. When I insert the tester into the non-controlled portion, it shows correct wiring, but when I turn the wall switch off and on, it's not affected. I'll put links in my video description for the Leviton Marked Controlled Receptacle, and I'll put a link for the Ideal Circuit Breaker Finder. Thanks, I hope this video was helpful.